in your life. Okay, perfect. So as a professional fitness and gym videographer, I thought the opening video that we're gonna do is about what's in my gym bag and what tools I use. Now, the most important thing I think as a fitness videographer that goes gym to gym, you need to keep things compact as possible. One, people don't like huge camera, huge lenses in the gym or pointed at their face. Two, some gyms are a little bit smaller and you just don't have enough room to be hauling around huge RS3 Pros or huge lenses, 70 to 200. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna break it down very simply. This is my camera bag, okay? This is PG, PG, PGY Tech. It's pretty simple. It does everything I need for me and it has a little bit of an extension just in case shit gets a little heavy. But we're gonna start obviously from the most important stuff. What camera do I use? Now the camera is, I use an FX3 a lot of times for a lot of long shooting, a lot of interviews, but most of the time I use the Sony ZV-E1. And the reason for that obviously is because it's extremely compact. If I forget my microphones, it has a really good microphone. And most importantly, it has the dual base ISO. It has the 640 and the 128 because we're shooting in S-Log3. Now, we'll get into camera settings later, but this is extremely important because having something so small like this when you're ripping around in the gym is priceless. Now, now we're gonna get into what lens. My favorite lens is going to be the 24 millimeter 1.3 G Master. Now, anything in that focal range would probably be the most ideal because with, with the Sony ZV-E1, you have clear image zoom where you don't lose that much resolution. They say you don't lose any resolution. I'm sure you lose some. And what happens is I can take this 24 and turn it into a 35. And 35 is, you know, it's just long enough for gyms without distorting anything. Of course, the G Master here is, it's overkill, but it's just something that makes the most money for me. So that's why I always use it. On this lens, I have a diffusion filter. I don't, I don't always use it. it it's a one eighth or one quarter. I don't always use it, but see, the important thing is some people have bad skin and some people just need, it's really hard to edit out bad skin in post-production without making it look all fake and cartoony. So using a diffusion filter sometimes helps a little bit with the bad skin just to kind of smooth it out and make it a little bit um, softer, as they would say. The other thing is, you cannot do any type of videography in a bright environment without having a VND, which is obviously a sunglasses kit for your lens. Because I shoot professionally and I like to stay in this in the 640 and the 128 range, we'll get into that. I need to be able to adjust the light in order to keep my shutter speed down, in order to keep my ISO at the target levels. So I will always have a VND. And that's one of the most important things. With this, what we have on the table here, you can pretty much start a business. With this, you can start getting paid. With this kit, you can do 80% of the work, especially with a ZV-1. Now, I brought this lens is because I carry this one everywhere. This is a macro lens. It, it also doubles, it's a 90 mil millimeter macro lens. It also doubles as a portrait lens if I need to get close up shots, but it's extremely good because nowadays everybody kind of wants to show off their clothing. Everybody wants to kind of show off what they're wearing. That's just part of gym culture nowadays. And with the macro lens, you can get details of fabric, you can get details of logos, you can get details of eyes, you know, when people are focusing or their face when they're without having the camera right up to their nose. Um, so that that's the other lens that I always carry around. You don't have to have that lens. Now, 
I brought this lens just to showcase. This is one of my favorite lenses and it will always forever be. It's the 35 1.8. This I think is $500 Canadian. I bought it on a used market. Threw on a $20 VND. It's a 1.8 so you get the blurry background. It's good in night. And the once again, most importantly, if you put it on the, this is one of the smallest setups. And this, this can make you thousands per month. Like you can just, pretty much fire up your business and just get going just with this kit. Um, I don't use it often, like I said, because I use clear image zoom with a 24 in, 24 millimeter, push it to 35, this 35 would push to a 50. I, for some reason, don't really get into 50s, even though I have a 50 lens. So this is, this is the essentials, obviously, right? Now, what we're gonna get into something that is always gonna be an extra, but it's always good to have a small light because you always wanna light up the person's face or light up their skin, um, especially when you cannot control the light, right? In the gym, when you're going from set to set, you're in different angles, positions, turned away from the light, turned towards the light. This is a magnetic piece too, so you can throw it on any machine, um, but you definitely want to have a little face light just in case things you can't bend light or anything like that and having a small little light like this wherever you go is extremely handy. Now, pardon me? This is some shitty brand. Oh no, it's newer. So it's a mediocre brand. I believe it was on sale for like a hundred bucks Canadian. And I will show you, you, you just turn it on and you can adjust the color, you can adjust the temperature and obviously like I said, the battery life lasts for hours and that's enough to get you through a, a video shoot, especially in the gym. Unnecessary, but sometimes handy is obviously mics. The ZV-E1 is, has a really good mic system if you wanna get interviews and you obviously use some AI or post editing software in order to make it clear after. But having good microphones, I don't use boom or uh, big bulky microphones I just like to have these uh, labs that I can just laugh somebody up and get little snippets of them talking um, get them comfortable if they feel a little bit uncomfortable or nervous in front of the camera um, always handy to have a good microphone I don't always carry these but when I know that I, if I'm gonna interview somebody or I'm gonna get some audio snippets I'm, I'm gonna bring these they're 500 bucks they're worth it Obviously now we're moving from a professional kit into something into something more di diverse, as I want to say. Gimbal. Now, this is a very controversial piece because for commercial work, gimbals are extremely useful. They look very smooth, but they look extremely robotic, right? They look like... It almost seems like nobody's there. There's no intensity in the footage. Um, they're good for opening shots. They're good for maybe uh, shots of the gym, uh, if you're trying to tell the story. But I wouldn't use it throughout the whole gym process because part of being in the gym is pushing yourself and putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. And when you're in that type of situation, you want a little bit of ha handheld action, especially me. I shoot with a lot of dynamic motion and Gimbals sometimes take away from that. Um, but the other thing that's worth mentioning is that the ZV, ZV-E1 comes with dynamic stabilization system that almost is gimbal-like, uh, that uses AI features to basically use the whole sensor and then crop it in, I believe at 1.5, and then it'll move the image around, the cropped image around in order to keep things looking like a gimbal but it only works for front and back so push-ins and push-outs when you start moving side to side it, it struggles a little bit with understanding um, the camera movement so gimbals are extremely good this is the RS3 I believe it's about $600 it has a vertical mount because let's be real most of the time everybody's shooting for their Instagram their TikTok and their shorts and if if you are trying to shoot vertical and crop in after you're gonna miss something and I guarantee you're gonna fuck up the footage I would always 
recommend getting a vertical mount for the gimbal if you know that it's going on social instead of losing resolution or uh, shooting uh, horizontal and then trying to trying to miss some of the footage um, that's the gimbal the other little things these are all 20 30 dollars you know a, a gray card you always want to have a gray card white side gray side in order to nail your white balance now obviously you don't need it because you can do it post shooting s log 3 you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of colors shooting 10 bit but if you nail the footage you're saving yourself sometimes hours of editing and let me tell you something if you're getting paid like me about fifty dollars an hour to edit that's about 50 bucks of just extra messing around and an hour of something else that you could be doing with your life instead of trying to just color balance which is just so crazy to me all right in this bag I have bag, I have batteries, I have extra batteries. I will always have extra batteries because cameras get, cameras sometimes you forget to turn off and after a long day of uh, shooting, maybe an hour or two, you always need an extra battery. And then the good thing about this bag, once once the battery is cooked, I turn it to red. And what that'll do is actually, it will make sure that I know that that's a dead battery and then I'll charge it later. Yeah. Absolutely, this, this bag is awesome now. Obviously, the VNDs I showed you guys. It's just little cases for VNDs. And let's see what else it had. Cleaning kits. So you clean your sensor, you clean your lenses at all times in order not to get dust or any dirt or spit collecting in there, sweat, especially in the gym. Call it the douche. For some course keep some cores just in case you need to drop footage but what I would recommend is always have extra SD cards with you just in case your SD card craps out and let's be real you're gonna forget an SD card one one of the times and if you're actually shooting with somebody I was just talking to James about it earlier it's so much easier to just pass somebody an SD card prior to starting the job and then just taking the SD card home to take the footage if you're the one that's doing the editing instead of we all know the 4k footage is so storage heavy and intensive and it's gonna weigh down not only on your computer your money your time is always to be sending footage right um, and that's it I have the horizontal I have the horizontal attachment just in case somebody does want to do some horizontal stuff I have a fan for my cameras just in case I start running it really long and I need it to cool down but that's the essentials and don't ever forget your phone because you actually un uh, underestimate especially the iPhone 15 Pro sometimes you need to mix in footage sometimes you need to use a B camera and these iPhones are actually really powerful so do not forget your phone obviously but um, make sure that you just keep in mind that you can always use your phone nowadays because it has so much power that you can you you can mix it in with uh, with your a footage and it won't look bad now this is it for the video it's gonna be a long one the next one we'll get into will probably be camera settings why the reasons between you know from anything from stability um, to ISOs to shutter speeds just to make sure that we get the crispiest and the cleanest and the most dynamic image that looks professional and that you can start getting and you can start charging people money and start getting paid for the work that you're doing oh yes 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 all right so James mentioned that I should bring up my laptop obviously if that's the thing about being an old guy you always think that you know everybody knows the basic knowledge but you always have to go back and remember that sometimes everybody needs a little bit of advice now obviously my SD, SD cards are in here this, this laptop is a 16 inch and it's important for me because with video editing you always kind of want a little bit of a bigger screen in order to 
color in order to make sure there's no banding. You just want to make sure that the bigger the screen, the easier it is. Now you don't need it. I also use a 14 inch for travel uh, just to make things easier. It's a little bit more compact. To be honest, I like carrying around the 14, but I just don't like editing on the, on the 14. I like editing more on the 16. Um, th this right here is just a SD pocket just so I can slide my different SD externals in there. I can, you know, put my, my baby SDs if I'm traveling real quick or anything like that, cords. But I use a lot of different Crucial, the Neetag, the, the, the SanDisk, um, external SSDs because I edit off of them. Um, the one thing that slows you down, well, the one thing that slows down your laptop is always going to be the memory, the storage, and it just keep, keeps things messy. Not only do I create projects on this SSD, I also keep all the files on the SSD so my laptop always stays clean. It's always optimized for the fastest video editing. And if I need to take it somewhere else, like I said, to my 14, to my desktop, if I need to pass the footage for somebody else to edit, I just unplug it, plug it to a different laptop, open up my editing software and just go at it because all my projects are saved on this SSD. Now, it is extremely important to also, to also back up your footage all the time, every day, every second day, because it takes long and you don't want to lose any footage ever. My recommendation is always to keep every single second of every footage, unless, you know, it's complete garbage, but you want to keep the footage just in case you always want to go back, redo hi highlight reels. And this is also a money thing because there's a technique to it. If you keep all the footage and somebody comes back to you and says, hey, I don't have time to film, but I, I need some content done, I'm willing to pay you. And you say, you know what? I think I have enough footage from the previous shoot. Uh, for $50 an hour, I can, I can make you another or edit another reel or a short form content uh, piece for you. For let's say 100 bucks, it'll take you two, three hours, right? If it's nothing serious. And yes, a lot of times you can go back and you will have enough footage, trust me. And obviously this is a MacBook. You don't need anything fancy, but I will recommend you getting an M1 up just because most of the editing software, all the plugins always kind of call for M or, or Apple, um, Apple chips nowadays. And now, we're finally finalizing the, uh, the video of what's in my camera bag, what I use at home, and this is the ultimate kit to get you started in the fitness industry, in the fitness videos, and it'll get 80%, 90% of the work done. Yeah.